Seems strong enough to be the jail. <laughs> I think the bank maybe, I don't know. Because it doesn't seem stout enough to be the jail. Let's leave everything and go traveling. See what tomorrow brings. It's only a choice of way. Well, we were packing up our campsite on Lake Titicaca. Do you remember the long, dusty road we took after crossing the border into Bolivia? Just a little bit of silt. It's like an inch of silt, and I don't want to wipe it off because just it'll just make everything so dirty. So hopefully it blows away. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. We've done the max speed in Bolivia, which is 50 miles an hour, and it's still there. I think it's all from our, our Guara Miram. So I think that we're need rain, which will turn it to mud, or we uh, stop and pay some kids again to wash the truck. Yeah. So you can't find those coin operated uh, like uh, washing Do places yourself, yeah. anywhere on the trip. Somebody, Tim was saying that in, um, other Tim, not me Tim, was saying that in Argentina and Chile you can do the self coin operated because I like doing those because I'm the guy who's going to masochistically lay under the truck and spray all the mud and dirt and just be covered and go cool the goose is clean and you know all good just then so as I'm closing up the tailgate look what I find to murder hopefully it's not in the truck yeah uh, but he's up there it's all he is I know you make it up that high, you're basically in the truck, you know? So getting gas in Bolivia is always interesting what price you're going to get because the locals have a local price, the government uh, you know, pays part of their price of the gasoline, so it's like three bolivianos or something a gallon, and then they have the national price for foreigners, and it is, I think at top, like eight something bolivianos. Um, we've been able to get the local price everywhere. This is the first one because we're close to La Paz that we've had to pay five bolivianos instead of three, um, but you have to ask for it without a receipt, so. It's, uh, they kind of make the difference, so they're kind of cheating the system. But it's, it's been interesting to see uh, who will allow you to get more of the local price and who wants to rip you off and, I guess not rip you off, but yeah, it's interesting getting gas here, so. Sin factura. After getting gas, we had no choice but to go back through La Paz. This time, we made sure to stay on the outskirts of the city as much as possible, and we were able to avoid the horrendous traffic, for the most part. finally made it through the craziness of the city. And even the outskirts of La Paz had proven to be stressful.
now we had driven most of the day, and we were on the hunt for a camp. And roads like this are exactly what we like to see. This one turned out to be no good with no flat space, but eventually we found a disused quarry that we could tuck into for the night. And in the morning, we hit the city of Cochabamba, where we stayed in the yard of a hostel, checked out the town, and all its cool vehicles. We also met back up with Tim and Shannon, who had made it across the border successfully. So we'll pick up the story here, just after leaving Cochabamba together. Good morning. This uh, we've taken a few days off just to relax and get some work done, and we were in Cochabamba, and then we are now headed through what's this little town, Oruro or something? Is what it's called? Yeah, Oruro. It's not that small. I guess it's a pretty good. It's like the fifth town. largest in Bolivia. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And, uh, so we're heading through a row and uh, check the video of these guys real quick. We have seen so many people, they're doing like a rad moto trip. Uh, we've seen tons of like XR650s, XR600s, those are some little ones. Those are like 200 CCers, but it's rad. It's like these guys look to me like they're on a Baja trip, you know, it's like sort of silly outfits and like decorated up their bikes. We yeah, saw a bunch cool. yesterday on the highway and, and they had stickers on every single bike, like the Something Adventure 2019, it, they're all passing us, so I couldn't quite uh, read it, but I love that. I love when you're in a country and you see people kind of going and doing Enjoying adventures like that. Enjoying their country, yeah. 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 Um, uh, but we're heading towards the Salt Flats, so I think we yeah. might stop at a hot springs, possibly. We'll see what it looks like uh, for tonight, and then maybe tomorrow then be hitting the Salt Flats. We don't know. Yeah. No, we don't service There's to see really in, uh, how far it is and all that. Right now, yeah, we got notification from the State Department. I signed up for those little notifications for each country and they have been kind of nice to have. And it says in Uyuni, the town right next to the Salt Flats, there's protests and roadblocks uh, for the next few days. So we're probably just gonna enter the Salt Flats off a different town because there's another town to the north that you could pop into them on. So we'll just do that. And then we'll exit in a uni maybe in, that could be three or four days or five days from now. So hopefully by then there's just no more roadblocks. Stopping at a train museum that was just along the road. It looks kind of cool, but I have no idea if it's open. We just found our way into this little town, and we're gonna go check it out. So maybe we'll see cool things. Maybe we won't. Don't know. So I don't think the museum is open, but it's still really cool to walk around here. It's like a, almost like an abandoned town. Like you can see how it was bustling before. This back here is really cool. It's like, it there's like little sheds for trains all around it. And so you can put them all, like change the direction and put them in. Back here in all of those doors, there's rad trains. I can't, you can only see parts of them because you can just peek through the little holes, but so cool. I wish I could go in there and see them. Pretty neat. Even though it's not open, it's still cool.
les sí. deseo una Gracias. buena tarde. Gracias. Me bueno, rebusca la señora. Sí, busco sí. 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 Doña, no sé, Matilde, no sé, algo pues. Nilda. Nilda. Nilda, sí. 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 El Perfecto. que atiende el museo donde vive. El... <risa> ya, listo. Bueno, muchas gracias. He was cute, so he was telling us that it's closed for lunch, but go to the little park and look in the tienda and ask for Nilda and tell her that we don't have enough time and so we should, she should open it so that we can see it and there's lots of cool trains to see. Yep. So that was nice, he was funny. That's funny. He's strong enough to be the jail. Well, for a stop we made because of an old sign on the highway, this train station turned museum was a really cool stop. And it wasn't even open. This station was once a private railway built by Simón Patiño. Simón was also known as the Tin King and the Indian Rockefeller. He built all this to transport minerals from his mines. The Tin King was born the illegitimate son of a Basque father and native Quechua mother in Cochabamba, and he worked his way to success. By the 1940s, he had made it and controlled the international tin market. In fact, when he died in 1947, he was the fifth richest man in the world. And according to the book Outliers, he is estimated to have had a total net worth of around 81.2 billion U.S. dollars. That was calculated in 2008. And it made him the 26th wealthiest individual of all time, ahead of Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and J.P. Morgan. So much interesting history here, and it was pretty crazy to just stumble on this place. That was really cool. Unfortunately, we hit it right at lunch, and we didn't want to wait like two hours for the lady to come back. So we got to see what was on the outside, and it would have been, it's really cool to see on the outside. So a worthy stop, and if we had paid to go in, I think it was like 10 bolivianos per person, which is like a dollar. Yeah, and then, uh, a dollar something, but not yeah. much. Totally worth it, I think. Yeah, if it was really cool. If you're in Bolivia, I think that was cooler than the sort of uh, train graveyard that's coming up in a uni. I've seen a lot of photos of that, and although that's really cool and photogenic, um, this is everything. Sort of the rotting trains, but yeah. the pre well-preserved ones, the ones that still run even. Uh, pretty amazing history in the middle yeah. of nowhere, really. Yeah, and everyone in that town was really nice and kind, so... Uh, yeah, cool stop. Now we're gonna, we're heading towards uh, some hot springs. I don't know if they're really hot springs or just like some thermal areas in a river, but yeah. we'll see if we can camp if it's a good spot. Yep. And uh, that's about the extent of our plan so far. Yep, that's that. Under the firm rule of the conservative leaders, Chile prospered. The government established the Department for Education, a training school for organized in 1909. Between As a driver listening to a book about Chile and Argentina, but it also includes some about Peru and Bolivia, so it's interesting. I'll put a link to the book below. I have to say, Bolivia was the hardest country for me so far. In my mind, it felt unstable. Between roadblocks, the hardship of just getting fuel, and the general poverty of the country, I was feeling on edge. Part of that was probably the dark cloud hanging over me from issues I was dealing with back home. Like I said, you can't escape real life. But as I watch these clips, I am reminded of how unsure everything was feeling to me, and this country just added to that. It's so interesting how circumstances can change the overall experience of a place. Tim had a completely different take on this country. Well, after one big town, a closed train museum, a few small towns, some dirt roads, and a bit of searching, we found the hot river we had been aiming for. But I'm going to save that for the next episode. So, 
Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And come along next time as we check out this thermal river. You refer to yourself. Jimmy likes. Can they remind you that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jimmy played pretty good. <laughs> all right. All right. I say all right. All right. All right, all right, all right.